is a picture of our 30 foot fortress here that we will be disassembling today uh, for the purpose of documenting it so we know how to put it back together. So you can see it's good of you. All right, we're inside our yurt that we just purchased. Used yurt, 30 foot fortress, three years old. We are going to be disassembling it. So we've got a team of very experienced first timers uh, that will be taking this down. So it is, I think, maybe nine degrees. Maybe we hit 10 degrees so far uh, in Colorado. 14 degrees now. Up, up to 15, so hoping for a high of above freezing. Uh, so first step is we got the scaffolding. We got to put it up here. Get it up there in order to start getting that done. And then we'll be yes. taking off the dome top and the, the canvas okay. roof. So and this is our journey of documenting it so we know how to put it back together. And for all of you who want to see how we figure out how to take apart a yurt. So enjoy. Right, this is Jesse with professional I'm an snow removal. That's literally the only reason why I'm here. Yeah. Just poke at the snow. We pay him $100 Whoa. an hour because of his technique and skills. And that's it. That's it. That's it. Ladders seem to work too. <laughs> Slides right off. We got about um, two inches of snow on it, maybe a little bit more. Okay, so. Uh, at the advice of the people who had put it up, they said we just lay a ladder on top of the um, of the wood going up and just leveled it up there. They, this particular model requires you to take off the dome from the outside. So apparently the screw's on the outside. So we're going to go check it out. We've On this side, there's a little bit of a hill, so there's not much to fall. Even if I slid and fell down, I just land in the dirt. So we're going to do that. Thank you. There we go. Uh, uh, uh. Step on the bottom, thanks, Scott. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of starts. weight is kind of on. <coughs> One. Yeah, we're gonna need more. I can't reach it. Yeah. <coughs> and this two by four in here is Ricky. I mean, I wouldn't trust it. Wouldn't want it to crack. Yeah. You need to have two. It across two. All right. So we moved it over here so the ladder is stabilized by the tree. And then he has it up here where it's supported by two of the rafters on the inside. Mm -hmm. So he's got the drill, he's going up. A broom or something. See how he can. Scott, there's a broom that um, Jesse was using. You want to go see if you can find it? Yep. <clears throat> he was sweeping off something. Or I guess you both were. Yeah, that way I'm on two. Yeah. I like that. And then the trees got you down here. <clears throat> the not going anywhere. There's snow up here. You got to get off, and there's supposed to be screws all around the top. Most yurts, I guess, screw from the inside, but this one screws from the outside. All right, here comes Scott. That feels good, unless it's tilted sideways. No, it looks good. Do you need the broom, Ryan? No. No. That drill has a magnetic thing on it. Just put the screws on it. Yeah, just screws up top here. Easy. All right. Can you reach all the way around it? No, I can't reach all the way around. So. Oh, great. Can you actually to, climb? If you hold the ladder, Scott. Yeah. Um, you want to make sure you have some gloves? I'm good. I think I've got some gloves in the plastic sack and stuff. Okay, so on my tiptoes, at the tip of the ladder, I'm just large enough, long enough, that I can reach over and reach this. There's probably uh, eight screws on here, and this is the last one, and I'm able to get it. So uh, the top will come right off right here, and I'll slide it down. Jesse, can you come over on this side? Yeah. I'm going to slide you down this. He's uh, going to just throw something at me. And there's Jesse getting the, the other screws. 
screwed, screwed into the fender board holding down the outside. You can see okay. there's screws here. Okay. Go through it Slide down. Yet. Like oh, 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 wait, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was something small. Okay. Are you ready? There's I'm the ready. dome. Okay. Coming down to Jesse. Oh, no. Oh, no. Come on, Bubble. Come on. It's going. I'm your father. Don't you remember me? Yeah. Here, I can get down now. He's the one kid that doesn't want to come back home. Keep everything up there, though, because you might need it when the roof... Well, you know, I can reach it here. I think I'm going to come down this way. You got it? Yeah, I can. Oh, oh this is cracking. On a 30-foot yurt. <laughs> so, come on down this way. It had some hail damage, Jesse. Okay, so it wasn't bad. Um, I need someone to grab the... The drill. drill. Here, I can get it from here. When you stand up, you can get it. So bad. All right. You can do that with good scaffolding. It's great. Okay. All right. Now that we have the dome removed, you can see here that these are just a big staple going on, and I probably could pry them off, but it looks like it's cold enough that these just pop out. Well, yeah, maybe not. Maybe I do need to get them. Yeah, some of them are tighter than others, so I'll get a screwdriver and pry them out right there. It's like going down. Heavy as I thought it'd be. Wasn't so bad. Okay, we were a little bit concerned about how we were going to get to pull it up. And it has slid right off. You see it slid right off there? Yeah, we didn't think, we weren't sure if it would work, but. What we did is we grabbed onto this side here, two of us guys with the scaffolding, and we were to pull up on this, pull up right here on this, pull it up over us, and then as those two on the other side pulled, pulled it down. And a little bit of work and it just slid right off. So it'd be hard to put back up. Yeah, I'll have to use ropes or something to get it back up. We don't have instructions for that. We've got some snow here. We plan on storing it until late spring, summer. We don't want that to all mildew. We're not sure, because we'll just have to unroll it in the spring, get the snow off. Anyway, that's what we're figuring out. We're just kind of rolling it up. Why don't we leave it like this, because this side's pretty good. So then we got to undo these bender boards, these side boards, uh, half inch, quarter inch, whatever plywood and you can see on the roof here I've got some of these and some nails holding in the insulation so but we can get those from the scaffolding on the inside and start working on that okay you can see here they've got nails where they secured it they said it was a really windy day not advised to put it up during high wind so I'm gonna get these off and get it so that I can pop my poke my head up through from the scaffolding um, and then you should be able to remove those without having to climb onto the roof. All the way around. Alright, to take these out, I got this thing, I guess it, some people call it a cat's paw. It works pretty easily, doesn't damage it very much. I can just get that in right here, tuck it underneath this, get in like that, tuck it underneath, hit it with the hammer, and it pries it right up. It seems to come loose, so that's what I'm to do for this. It looks like they laid this in just strips and kind of went over and worked their way. So obviously they're all straight. All right, I've successfully made it through and I've been able to pull the canvas off. It seems to be two pieces of canvas and I could just slide it down here. They had stapled some of the canvas up trying to get it up. The other side, it looks like they put that up first and stapled it. This side just pulled up. 
All right, here's where the dirt has kind of caved in a little bit. So they're digging it out to get down to the screws. Take so, off the canvas. Canvas outside and on the top. Got some progress up there. Got that the side coming off slowly. So the canvas has been stapled in some spots. So they have to just remove those. See a little bit here. It goes up there. And I rocked around to this side where he pulled the tarp off. And I did that without it. That's what we've got. So on the inside now we can start undoing some stuff, but you can see in spots they still have where there's some nails. So we gotta get that, but we can get that from the inside with freestanding ladder. That works well. Just little by little. Part your section. Across around there. All right, we removed half of it. Came down all from the inside. Just piece by piece. I got the canvas all <laughs> piled up right there on the inside. Now we're slowly just taking the part here all the way around. It has three these boards that go around to secure it from the lattices from moving. We're just removing those right now. Scott's taking out these screws that seem to be what would keep it from going off. It hooked right into the that cable going across. And we are about done here. Okay, we're unscrewing all but three of these. Where these are built, there seems to be some sort of pin that holds them so they don't actually fall down, which makes it easy. So just unscrewing those and leaving three up, and I'll take those down last. And then, Scott, let's test this over here. These seem to be at the end, so grab like any one of those, and you probably have to get a ladder, and you have to undo it from the cable and we'll see how that works all right so is there any way to push in the cable or how tight is it on there there we go, there we go. and and you can pull it down okay let me see. And there you go it's got that pin in there like that it just slide right in there it came down just like that you got it there you go all right have it all done just these boards which are taken out a piece at a time and the last will be this piece. And that should go pretty easily. Yeah. All right, there we are. We're down to just three left. Had a bit of mishap. We had these three held in, and then we were pulling them out of the groove. It's important to remember that you should keep, if you keep those three screwed in, keep the screw that holds and locks the cable in as well, so that that doesn't come out of these three, because we had one fall down, and uh, as it on its way down, it hit back somewhere in Scott's head, so be careful with that. All right, and just like that, there's a the final piece. It worked with two guys on the bottom and then me holding it up in the center. Just right, a third guy would have been better, but that's great. <laughs> okay, we've been taking off the bracing and realized that might be a little bit more important to take down the windows and the doors because now there's nothing supporting it. And you can see here, it's, it's moving. So it's no longer stable. So I'll start taking those down right now. And then I think the next part will be to remove the outer canvas. Alright, we've just been unscrewing these windows. 
come right out from the outside. They have these removed. And this tarp on the outside is removing the wood on the inside and the staples. And then we've just been rolling on rolling this outer canvas. Or against the tree over here. It rolls pretty well other than when you get to a window. But it then we'll get to the door. All right, we just got the outer canvas removed, halfway rolled. Um, I think we learned we, this one was tied with zip ties on the top. Um, about halfway we realized, oh, we probably should leave those zip ties hooked up <coughs> so we could roll it vertically. So we got about halfway around and then we decided to clip them all the rest of them off and then just take it all the way off, pull it over on top of the roof and roll it up here. So our big thing with this, Trying to make sure we got rid of all the snow so that we can store it into the spring. Trying to scrape off as much ice and snow as we can off of this. They're good for the winter, but we need to open it up in the spring. <coughs> all right, we removed the <coughs> French doors and it just came out. Now we're removing the outer thermal insulation and we're just rolling it as I go around. It's pretty easy, straightforward. So we get this. We haven't touched this cable yet. Leaving that last. All right, we've got thermal insulation removed from the west side. We got that to do next. This is how it's tied together. The rope, the cable that goes all the way around, keeps the roof from pushing the sides out. Both together like that. Alright, these scissor section pieces are all seem to be screwed into the bottom. Some plywood into the foundation. And just with some metal edging to go around. So we're gonna undo those from the door and the window frame. That's how you do it, folks. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Any help? Do you, did, did you mark it? it out of thing, the thing? Did you mark it? Um. <clears throat> Unscrewing all of the screws around here, and then it's still um, caulked. So you just kind of have to. I don't like your razor blade across there. I don't want to really pull it. Yeah. There's a tiny little strip of Probably wood. I need your razor blade or something. I have, yeah, I have it. Yeah, I'll figure that out. Yeah. So here we are today, day two of the yurt disassembly. So today's goal is to get that foundation flooring all up and loaded on a trailer. All right, so this is day two of disassembling our 30 foot fortress yurt. Uh, yesterday went great. Uh, <clears throat> didn't really have any setbacks, made the progress we had hoped we would make. And today, if we can, well, we got daylight in the morning, hopefully make good progress and get this foundation taken up. It's been nailed down, so we've got a little bit of extra work of figuring out how to pull it up. Looks like there's some screws on the outside. Um, so we'll see how well that works. Um, that's our goal today. 
then we'll get it and put on a flatbed trailer and haul it out of here. Okay, so what we're doing here on this is we're using a cat's claw nail puller. <laughs> and they nailed it down with, where are the nails? These lovely nails with the, that's not in The focus. best possible nail for the job. So the ones that don't move easily. Yeah. So we're just ripping them up one by one. To pull it up. We were successful. And we got this removed. And then we'll pick it up. So, we got one to go, and I don't know, 30 more to go. All right, this is how we're marking these things. We're numbering starting at the top with one for that beam. If only we could get... Here, Emerson, here's another one. All right, the little cat's claw seems to damage it pretty bad. Yeah. So, come on. All right, the little cat's claw nail removal seems to damage it pretty bad, so. I resorted to, seemingly it looks better, just taking a little thing like this, slamming it in there, right where the nail is, and breaking it. That seems to work. Then just hitting it right in there. It doesn't damage it. Try that for a bit. So far, here's what we've got. Alright, we're just removing, just removing the screws. Oh, sorry, the nail. I think we can maybe salvage these. Good to know, though, we're having a terrible time with the screws over there, so... This is definitely the harder part today. It's taking a long time. The one board just split. The particle of the plywood. But, it's coming. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Making progress, it's just slow. So, we've determined taking out as many nails as possible works best for prying it up. Okay. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Another one. 
and bite the dust. Look at that. It split the wood. Oh, dang. You can see on the camera, if you're going to do something that's temporary, don't use nails that have the grooves on them. The people that take apart your structure will literally cry for five hours. It splits your wood. <laughs> All right, this is the progress we made on day two. We thought we'd make more progress, but those nails, ribbed nails really slowed us down. But we're, this is what it looks like. Turn it up, we just had these pieces left over. Just have all the nails for now. Clean that up later. Did our best to label it this way in Tennessee. These beams right there, zero, starting with negative one up there, zero, one, two, three, and four, five. And then north. So everything just points north is the sort of here. north. And south is over here. South. Out. So I can get a picture of where that looks like. Well, you let me touch you. Oh my goodness. Yeah, too friendly. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm petting a deer. So, where? <laughs> I'm petting a deer. I got on video. Hi. <laughs> Hi. This is all part of disassembly of the yurt day three. Right out of my tea. This is the one I don't want to get close. Yeah. That one, y'all. Uh, 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 uh. Get out of there. That's Come my on. tea. Get. Come on. Get. Come on. Come on, Mom. Get, get out of here. Okay, I just pet a deer. Right? I've never pet a deer. Okay, we got our last piece of plywood off. That was tough. We ended up getting another tool, which really helped a nail puller uh, to get the last one. So anyway, now it's just onto the support beams. Let's get the rest of those off. All right, there we have it. It's done. Uh, we're still loading on the trailers, but we just disassembled a 30-foot yurt. And made good progress this morning. Taking apart those beams. We're done. Well, this, this required more trailers than we thought. We ended up having to load three trailers. This is the overflow. The last stuff that we needed to bring. We loaded. This is trailer number two of the overflow. So I want to make sure it didn't overload this. This is all, how many of these were there? 31? 31, maybe. 36, I don't know. They weigh a bit. And this is the first trailer. This is the main one we were going to load everything up on. Hopefully, it'll, once the coat can pull it, should be able to. Not too much weight on the tongue. Gotta adjust that hitch though, it's the wrong size, borrowed it from somebody.